All right, I want to give you an example of why you would use a variable. Okay, and what I'm going to show you is how to make a ball go back and forth. So I just want the ball to go right, left, right, left. Every time it hits an edge, turn around. Okay, I'm going to start off with, I've got a clock timer, and I'm going to make it so the X coordinate changes by five every time interval. Okay, um, you know, I've got a, a timer interval of like 150, but it, it looks a little jumpy. It's because my phone is being projected onto the screen. Okay, but anyway, you, as you saw, the ball moved to the right because every clock timer I changed the X coordinate, the horizontal coordinate by five. Okay, well, I don't always want to go right, right? I don't always want to add five to X. Sometimes I want to go backwards. I want to, I want to take five away from X to make the ball move left, okay? But I kind of got to remember which way I'm going. So to remember that, I'm going to define a variable. I could call it like direction or something, but what I'm going to call it is distance. And it's basically going to keep track of, you know, which way I'm going. And it's going to keep track by just having a number in it. So it's going to store 5 to start. I'm just going to get rid of this 5. And instead of putting 5 there, I'm going to grab distance. Okay. So this should work the same. Um, let, me, let me get this guy to restart. Let's just change this time interval to 160 or something. And when you, when you make a change in the designer, that gets the, the testing app to, to start over. So now you're going to see the ball move. And it's still doing the same thing, right? Distance is set to 5, and every timer interval, it, it changes by 5 until it hits the edge. Okay, this is great, um, but we want this guy to change. And it's a variable, so even though it's initialized to 5, it can change. All right, so we just need to make sure we change it. And in fact, when the ball reaches an edge, that's when we want to change our, um, our direction. Okay, so I'm going to grab the edge reached event. Okay, and when I want to reach the edge, I basically want to make distance different. Okay, so I'm going to go grab a set. I'm going to change distance. Now, I could change it to negative 5. Okay, let's just try that just to, to test it. So if I change this to negative 5, um, I should kind of get what I want. So let's get this guy to restart again. And I think what we're going to get is we're going to get this ball to go all the way to the right edge. I think it should hit the edge. Distance should become negative 5. And then the time interval should then use the negative 5 and make the guy go left. Okay, good. That's, that's working. So we flipped the sign of distance to negative 5 and we went right to left. But we want to make this go forever and ever. So really kind of what I want to do is change distance's sign. I want to go from 5 to negative 5 to 5, etc. over, over, over and over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is a little bit of a trick. I'm going to just multiply by negative 1. Alright, so I'm going to grab a multiply block and I'm just using the type uh, coding that you can do with with app inventor and what I want to do is every time it hits the edge I want to multiply the distance by negative one all right okay so um, when we start distance is going to be five we're going to be moving right but when we hit the edge either edge we're basically going to flip the sign of the variable distance make it five negative five five etc Okay, let's see if this works. I'm going to go trigger the, the tester to, to start over again. And I'll give it a timer interval of 120. So it should start over again. Now I think when we hit the right edge, um, distance will become negative 5. And start, so there we go. Now we're going left. Now when we hit the left edge, distance should now become negative 5 times negative 1 or 5 and start going right. So I think this will happen forever and we, we kind of have what we want. 